Picasso also creates a lesser known work. And this is based entirely on World War II. And this is called the Charnel House, Paris. Now, this is an unfinished depiction of a family having suffered a massacre in their own home. And it's really an existential piece depicting his understanding of the war. Again, we have not been through a war like this. And we cannot understand the way Picasso understood World War II. He lived through it. He's in Paris during the war. He's seeing the destruction of the war take place around him. Now, existentialism grew into a philosophy that placed stress on individual ethics and on the authentic experience of selfhood, on this idea of freedom and choice. Existentialism's focus on individual experience makes it the perfect tool by which to interpret much of post-war abstract art because it provides a particularly useful framework to discuss the highly expressive and individual abstract art that flourished in Europe after the war, primarily after the late 1940s. Some of this work by painters such as de Buffet and Walls address the uneasy coexistence of mind and body on which human beings rely and existentialism's interest in sensory perception, which offered a meaning to negotiate the sometimes difficult divide between mind and body. Existentialism also contributed to discussions of figurative art in the post-war period, shaping responses to the work of Bacon in particular. It also maintained the importance of the individual and his or her duty to determine the meaning of life. And some people will take this a whole nother way, basically saying there is no meaning of life. You get into this sort of sense of uh, almost nihilism. And in Charnel House, now this is an unfinished piece once again, you can see some of the uh, underdrawing that takes place. This is Picasso trying to come to terms with what has happened during the war. And in fact, it is thought that Picasso was looking specifically at the Holocaust in this piece, looking at those mass graves and those images of mass graves being filled with the bodies of the victims of the Holocaust. Because they're victims of the Holocaust during the war, but they're also victims after the war when they're trying to save these people and refeed the people. And there's a lot of people who will survive, see liberation, and die because they just don't have the strength to get over that hump, to be recovered. And so you have these images of mass graves and people just being piled into them. And that's what he's trying to capture here, uh, this sort of idea of the war as these this pile of bodies. And when we look at the pile of bodies, we see specific characters in it. We see this sort of pudgy face uh, of a baby or a small child. We see uh, what appears to be a woman's face, a man over here, all mixed up as if they've just been sort of bulldozed in or thrown into a conveyor belt that will take them to their mass grave. The bodies are mixed. Some of them are tied, uh, telling us that maybe some of these are victims that were dug up and then reburied, which happens regularly after the war as they dig up these mass graves and try to catalog and identify whenever possible the bodies that are in them. This is really powerful imagery, and it's one that he will never finish, but uh, it's still that very powerful reminder of how horrific World War II really was, and arguably this is more powerful than a lot of what we saw from German new objectivity, but it's still in the same vein, trying to remind people of the horrors of the war so that we won't repeat it in the future.